Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University School of Design. It's uh, Thursday, April 16, 2020, and this is the introduction to Drawing for Designers class. Uh, today we're going to draw a coffee mug. And um, we're going to look at some pages from uh, also a book by uh, Mario Ballin, who is a belief German teacher that teaches in a in a Basel uh, design school, um, the Basel design school in Switzerland. And these are from, uh, from his book on drawing. So these are just some sketches. So we're gonna use some of his uh, principles um, and techniques. Uh, mainly though, we're gonna be using uh, an isometric uh, setup for our oblique views of the objects. And then we're going to be using uh, contour lines to define those curves that would otherwise be difficult to, um, to visualize in terms of their three-dimensionality. Um, and he has a few nice examples. I believe all of these are actually students' work um, of pictures and shapes that have mostly round, cylindrical, spherical, and then they'll have a handle. And the handle is nice because it's a, it's an extra plane, it's an extra uh, element um, that's a little bit harder to draw rather than being just a series of ellipses stacked on top of one another. Um, uh, most of these drawings have a, a little setup drawing, usually just a, an elevation view or a side view uh, since it repeats. Uh, you just need one view. And then maybe there's some details, in this case, the spout, um, perhaps because he was trying to do maybe different variations of the, um, of the spout. Um, there's another picture. So what we'll do is we'll draw something similar to this and a mug I thought was a good, a good, um, a good object that you might have perhaps at home. So I'm trying to orient this in the same general view. Uh, because I'm so close to the camera, the view might be a little bit uh, distorted and a little bit too much in perspective. But, um, but basically, this is the general position that we'll be drawing it. And we're going to draw the uh, handle um, along that main, one of the two main axes of that isometric, okay? Um, so if this was viewed from the top, uh, let me think for a moment, yes. Um, the handle would be on this side. Like that. Um, and I have different cups, I sort of, Took out all my, um, oops, some simple ones, you know, pretty much cylinder with maybe a little bit of a cone, and the handle is in this case small. Um, fancier cups, fancier mugs that are, as are actually handmade by um, an uncle, um, and however, you know, all of them have this basically same. Uh, basic arrangement. It's a cylinder, hollow cylinder with a strap, a band running on the side. And how it gets connected is, uh, you know, could be elaborate or it could be quite simple like this. Uh, most of the time though, there is a rounded connection because with ceramics, it's really hard to do very sharp um, connecting edges. I also brought a little coffee cup for espresso. Um, very beautiful, simple shape. And a little more whimsical one. Uh, so I don't know if we'll get to draw all of these, but maybe I'll go over the general structure of them, if not drawing them in full. Um, and another one too. Um, let's see. So yeah, this is again from Mario Bolin's book, 
um, which is a beautiful book. Unfortunately, it's in German for those who don't speak German. It's a little tricky, but uh, it's mostly illustrations either freehand um, or with the computer. Um, and I don't have images from that now, but um, you can see it uses a little bit of perspective in these drawings. Um, you can see here this block is slightly smaller on the back here. Um, they're all quite nice. They're all very free in a sense, but yet um, quite precise. So we can go, we'll go back to that. I think I'll, I'll leave one of these up handy. Yeah, let's just leave, uh, let's leave this one. Um, I have strange paper today, the size it's a uh, legal size because I couldn't find something other, other paper, but um, So before I start though, I want to actually talk about something called topology, which is this branch of mathematics that, that um, studies shapes and how shapes, um, how shapes can change or however how the relationships, um, spatial relationships, um, the dimensions may change, but the special connections don't change. And so in topology, An interesting uh, analogy is that between a, um, a donut and a coffee cup. So basically these two objects are actually the same in topology because we have a hole here, which is this hole, but this could be stretched out and actually turned into a donut itself. It sounds a little weird, but it's, um, it's the case. Um, and so it's different from, for example, a bottle. Actually, um, which could theoretically be stretched out into kind of a flat surface um, inside out. You cannot do that with this without changing the uh, relationships. Uh, and I'll show just one other object from topology, which is actually a cool little device, and that is called a Mabius strip. Quite a few things you can do with paper. Um, and a Mabius strip is simply a piece of paper that has been connected end to end, a little strip, a band. However, instead of connecting it like this, which would be typical, the end is connected like that by doing a twist. And so the result is that while you have two surfaces on this piece of paper and one boundary, when you flip it, the edges and connect it like this, you end up having single surface instead of two surfaces because it's continuous and also a single boundary. And it's actually quite, um, quite interesting. So I'm gonna, actually cut a longer strip to really show it. Uh, there's a couple of interesting properties. A little bit longer, but not too long. Um, and topology is a branch of mathematics, but also geometrically. Um, Something that my teacher Scarpa, whom I've mentioned in the past, worked with and was always studying how to make uh, shapes that would transform uh, without basically breaking. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, so this is called maybe a strip. I think it was German, maybe Swiss. Grab some tape. Yeah, so we we simply do this. We just connect it, but we flip we flip the edges, and um, an 
nice job. <laughs> a long digression into topology from coffee mugs, but since the coffee mug really is one of the objects that always point to as being equivalent to a donut, um, I thought this might be of interest. So that's the Möbius strip. So if you had like a, a train track on this, it would be a continuous loop, right? The train would go all the way around and over and over and over and it would just never be ending. Um, so one thing that we can do to this that will be quite interesting is we can cut it in half and let's see what happens if we do that. I'm just going to bend it for a moment so I can start it. So what happens in the with the first cut is that you just get a very a much longer uh, maybe a strip and it's still the same property still one one surface only and one edge only continuous uh, now a very very interesting thing happens if you cut if I cut this again in half the strip that is. Believe me, I don't know how to explain what the result of this is in mathematical terms, but it's pretty cool. You'll see in a second. And what happens is that we actually get now two loops. Um, You can see them, but you have one loop and a second loop, and they're like intertwined. So, okay, so that's a little bit of topology. Now let's draw the uh, let's draw the mug. Um, so I think I'll start with the very simple, simple, simple one. Uh, so just a straight cylinder uh, and the handle. And what I'll do, let's see if I can. What I'll do is I'll just try to get the proportions real quick. So it's a little bit taller, just a little bit taller than it is wide, um, which means that I would build almost like a cube. Okay. Uh, well, let's draw it. Let's draw it here on the side, maybe small, so a square but a little bit taller. Um, and then this handle is about half of the width of the mug itself, right? So that would be this much, roughly. Oh. And it almost takes the entire side, right? So we can, and it's it looks like it's a it's a sort of a large circle with two smaller circles here. So what, what I'm going to do is maybe do that to get that curve um, and maybe two smaller circles here. It's funny, it looks more square than it, than it should be. So maybe I'll adjust it a little bit. Um, and now again, I could look at the cup and I probably should, but at the same time, I know that, um, oh yeah, from the top view, I'm going to, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put the handle uh, while well, we know it's here, right, somewhere. Um, and I'm going to orient it so that the handle is going to come out this way. 
So at the most basic level, I can't put this down now because you'll see a different in the video. So I'll just um, I'll just leave it alone and um, just keep it on the side here. But what I'll do is I'll just refer to the uh, to the sketch. So so the first thing we we need to do. Uh, it really is similar to the bottle that we drew at the beginning of the class of the semester. Uh, but now the difference is that we have this other element which breaks up the symmetry. So, but let's start with um, just creating our, our cube. And because this is quite simple, I'll, I'll do it quickly because uh, I like to do the other ones that are a little more, more elaborate. Um, and if you wanted to play with perspective a little bit, you could, meaning that since you're looking up from above, um, the bottom would be a little bit, a little bit further narrower than the top, right? So these lines would be going a little bit up like that. Um, but I like to keep maybe at least one in the middle vertical. Um, so let's quickly draw the structure. Now the handle. Is actually a little bit shorter at the top and at the bottom, right? So this is my space here that I'm going to do. Um, now for the cylinder, we can do what we did before, which is we we just draw um, ellipses. If you recall. So if something is sitting on the ground like this, okay, and you would be seeing like this if it's sitting in front of your desk, uh, one thing to remember is that your ellipses representing the circle are always going to be facing up with the short axis of the ellipse pointing up in the general direction of your um, of your mug, right? So that. But if you look at your mug, um, let me change it like this. These are your axes, right? So meaning it has to be straight like this. Uh, if I turn it, this mug is not lying flat on the plane anymore. It's somewhere else, right? So my white pencil in this picture um, is always going to be, in this case, parallel to the top of my screen which would be parallel to the top of the drawing, okay? So that's that's very important if we want to our mug. So if you're gonna do a little bit of perspective, it's true that these lines are gonna be a little bit angled, but the main line should always be uh, really going up straight, okay? So we're gonna go back and forth a little bit between perspective and, and isometric, but... Um, so now that I have defined kind of the general shape, well, I, yeah, see, I actually ended up doing it the opposite. I, I kind of opened it up at the bottom rather than, than at the top. Um, then on the side, the first thing I'm going to do is just try to replicate that shape. Uh, and here, it's good to remember that this, um, this handle is part of, in a way, another cylinder that would be being extruded through, right? If it was a simpler shape um, or a half a cylinder. So what we do in that case is we orient our ellipses going in that other direction of the object because I'm locating it here. So I would draw my ellipse this way, right? So here, if you recall, we said, oh, okay, maybe there is a big circle to start out. So I'm trying to create that. And I'm going to do a, an ellipse with that general direction um, to get me started. And then here, perhaps we have smaller circles right here right 
So that would be two more ellipses roughly in that spot and in this spot. So that would be roughly here maybe. Roughly there. I have to be careful to keep to keep my orientation um, and that's actually on the inside. So I drew it on the outside. So I need to come in a little bit. Um, meaning I need to come down and I need to go up here a little bit. Um, and then I can try to reconnect what I had these two. So you can see I'm sort of negotiating a few. And, and right now I'm not even doing a 3D version yet, I'm just getting kind of the general. And my attachment is here, so I actually missed it a little bit. I have to, I have to bring this much closer. So even, you can see even a simple and this one went too far inside. So I, I have to do a bunch of corrections now here, but hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, yeah, now if I didn't do anything else, I could just pretend that this is round, but you can see it is not round. I mean, it is round, but it's also fairly flat. Um, so I need to sort of expand it a little bit. And one way I could do that is to, um, let's see, I need to, to sort of bring it out at both ends here. then to give it um, and after a while I, I I just have to commit and say okay now so what I'm gonna do is trying to give it a cup you know just a little bit of because it's because it's round and yet it has a thickness I have to somehow um, Um, try to to sort of make a little bit of a compromise, uh, but it's not it's not terrible. Okay, now I'm gonna just try to do the bottom of the. And here I'm gonna have to do a little bit of a lip to the mug. Um, again, it's hard to do when you go back in. It's hard to to do. Um, perfect the lips in one straight shot right so what i do is i start at the endings and when the when the things when the when the walls of these things are thin it's a little bit um hard to to kind of get um anyway this is sort of Okay, I, I, it looks a little bit lower, right? It's probably lower than it should have been. Um, also, these two elements right here are not perfectly aligned. Um, so if I were to redo these, I would probably bring this up a little bit here. Uh, uh, but I'm going to do another one. Um, before I do, though, I'm going to just quickly show one simple way of shading it if we wanted to um, give it a little more well besides of course doing remember what we called the contour lines right um and if you go to youtube and you look at the rapid visualization videos there will be one one um, tutorial on shadows and let's see if I find my, yeah, real quick. Uh, Professor Natata also teaches this. And that is that if you, 
if you have a cylinder and you want to shade it, um, again, we don't shade it, you know, using chiaroscuro that's like totally faded like this, I mean, totally gradient and sort of continuous. What we do instead is we just do strokes like that and we fade by putting more room between the strokes. Uh, so in this typical setup, um, in this standard setup, we assume that the light is coming from the left and, um, and also from the back a little bit perhaps and from above as well, okay? So that our shadows are going to be on the right side. Um, and if you look at the plan view, it's, it's of course artificial, meaning it's sort of diagrammatic and it works visually. If you put a real light on this object, it might look slightly different, but when you set it up like this, you have a highlight at like 7.30 p.m. and you have a shadow at 4.30 p.m. Um, and then you have a cast shadow too on the ground. Um, in order to give Three, you know, a sense of three dimension to the object though, it doesn't fade out completely towards the back here, the highlight, meaning it doesn't burn out. It, there is a little bit of a shadow there and at the opposite side, it doesn't completely go into dark here. There is a little bit of a highlight, <clears throat> which is given by reflected light, maybe from another surface. Um, and the view is, is placed in front. So, Yeah, so to summarize, this is what you would have. The highlight on the left with a little bit of shadow to its left. The core shadow on the right with a little bit of light to its right. And the cast shadow. And then these intermediate zones. Um, so if we wanted to, and everything is done, you can see with strokes. If we wanted to dark uh, shade, now what we would do now I don't think I can shine the right light onto this to see how it might look but now it's, it's too hard in this setup um, so we'll pretend that we're looking at the real thing um, so if the light is coming from here I might now the shadow in this case maybe I can reverse it and have the light come out from this side so that I can make my these were the two spots. So this would be my core shadow right here. Again, I'm not doing this, which is also not so great. I'm doing definite strokes, then a little bit less near it. And then again, a little bit of shadow there. Um, to have the shadow there. And then inside you can, uh, the light is from there, so actually the shadow is on this side. And then the, um, Again, even though the drop shadow might be pointing this way, it looks it looks kind of better and okay if we do it going that way. I'm gonna stick to my, well, actually let's do it this way. Okay, so that's the first mug. Um, before I do another one, let, um, let me just say one thing about a shadow on a cylinder, which is something that you might encounter as well. Um, this is the video, by the way, in YouTube. It's called Line of Symmetry. I think it will come up if you, if you, if you enter Trogo and um, RapidViz and Symmetry. So in a, 
in a sphere. Um, again, if you had the light, say from above, a sphere is tricky because, you know, if you have a circle, you can say that's a sphere, but there isn't really much to much information, you know, I have to imagine it. And one thing, of course, we can add is like contour lines, right? So as soon as we add these kind of lines, we start thinking, oh, maybe this, maybe this is a sphere, you know, like a globe. Um, anyway, in terms of shadows, the core shadow is obviously the opposite end on the other side of the, uh, of the uh, direction of the light. Uh, it casts a shadow on the ground and the core shadow is what's called a little banana shape. And you can see that there is a little bit of highlight left in here, which theoretically could be bounce, light bouncing off the, the surface area, the desk. Um, but it's really a graphic trick to separate the actual object from its shadow. Otherwise, it would just be a little too muddy and too complicated. And here's another trick. It's putting in a little bit of a shadow, but it's really meant to signify a highlight. But because we can do a highlight, if it's already everything highlighted is white, we just draw it as a little shadow, even though it's really uh, supposedly a highlight. So. Let's see. Yeah, these are the. Uh, and in this drawing, I drew several um, contour lines. So again, core shadow is on the opposite side of the light coming in. The drop shadow, of course, follows that to some extent, although it's, again, a little horizontal. Uh, the core shadow has a banana shape with a little sliver of light to separate it from the, uh, from the cast shadow. Um, and this sort of reflects this sort of standard classic lighting setup where you have a maybe a main light, you have a fill, which could be a piece of paper that reflects back some light, uh, and then you have a backlight. Um, this is another example where we didn't use the strokes, we just, so it's a little bit going against the typical way that we do it, but um, just for fun. And sometimes, like if this was maybe, if there was something else here that was reflecting, you might add a little color that could be an indication that there is something else um, facing it. Maybe something colored red, as in this case. All right, um, let's do 10 more minutes until 11 and we do another, another cup. Um, so let's see which one. That proved quite challenging, even though it's really just a straightforward. Um, so why don't we do this one, which has a nice, a nice handle, and we'll treat this handle, you know, as a as a strip, so we don't have to worry too much about the thickness. Although, of course, here it gets thick because of the connector. Um, And then this afternoon, when I do the other meeting, I will draw different mugs so that in the combined video, I'll probably put them all together. Um, yeah. So this is a little trickier in that it's not a perfect cylinder. It's sort of tapered a little bit at the end. And this, yeah, these are definitely um, made by hand and they're thrown on a wheel, on a potter's wheel. Uh, and that's why you have, you know, slight imperfections. Um, so, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume it's a cylinder slightly tapering here and then a kind of a cone. So in reality, I'm going to exaggerate here, but it's really, a design that is like this, right? 
with you know with this pinching there being a little less so than 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 what I'm showing, uh, but it's good to to diagram it diagram it this way because um, we just have to remember that we need to shrink it down there a little bit. So let's do one that it's more again a little bit taller than it's wide. Um, so again, always do this. Make your make yourself a little diagram um, the handle is uh, about less than half so less than that and it takes up maybe half the space here right okay and then we can start doing the slight modifications here. This looks like the middle. So we're going to, yeah, roughly the middle, a little bit taller. Anyway, this, this step is really, it's really important because it, it a little bit more because it allows you to see okay yeah i'm not doing it right i need to bring it down a little bit more and then the connector here there's always of course you know every cup that's worth using should have you know enough of a grip right um i mean i know something like this you don't put your finger in really it's too small but it's really just to grab it um but because this is bigger you need more support so it's it's got more room <laughs> um and the handle here is attached later so it has to again have enough enough meat enough beef to To be able to stay there right to stay attached so okay maybe it's bigger than i drew it but all right so i'm i'm gonna put this out of the frame but i'm going to actually be looking at it because for me um uh, it is in the right position, um, but so not to confuse the viewer, although I'll bring it back once in a while, um, which this would be the view, right, that we would be doing. Um, so for now, let me zoom in a little bit and let me start to try to draw it um, by drawing again the main, the main axis, okay? So I'll, I'm going to do it big because I'm hoping that since the camera can focus very well, I'm hoping that if it's big, it won't matter much. Um, so I'm trying to do again my angles in my um, sort of standard isometric view. Uh, we said it's a little bit taller than a cube, than one to one. Um, yeah, my angles are a little bit. Okay. And then the handle is going to come out this way. It's going to be here somewhere. Right. Now, when I look at this, it looks much squatter, much um, much shorter than when I look at the cup. But the reason for that is that actually our shape is enclosed by the circle and therefore it's actually not going to go to these edges because as soon as I make, let's just do a simple cylinder, um, everything is going to get shrunk this way. All right, so let's let's draw that. 
And one could take a little more time in trying to be a little more precise with this crossing and these enclosing shapes. Um, so let's let's do our. Remember, you want to do a dry run a little bit when you move, and you want to be guided by the palm of your, the bottom of the palm of your hand, and you want to, and you don't want to turn your wrist at all. You really want to keep your wrist stiff. Um, or locked as it were, and move this way from your elbow, okay? Just move from your elbow and from your shoulder. Um, so anyway, we were saying that as soon as I do this, you can see now all of a sudden my cup is nice and tall, right? Immediately, because I've That's about, you know, that's much better, right? So there's a little bit of moment there of like confusion perhaps, but um, and, um, and now I'm just gonna draw kind of a ribbon that will be quite, so it's, we said it's, it comes out, you know, perhaps halfway halfway of the halfway there, right? So if this is my center, maybe I, find, I divide it into four parts, one, two, three, and four, and I'm going to eventually draw it there. Um, I could almost draw a circle here to kind of get something. And remember, drawing a circle means drawing an ellipse, right? Um, with the paper, with the ellipse facing our other direction. So this time before committing to make sort of a final sketch, um, I will wait. <laughs> and I know already that I'm drawing a circle that, let's see, I, I, I can use that part, but it's really a small circle because this line comes out here, right? It actually has to go back so I, I have a sense that already my my circle there should be smaller. Um, and now I'm just drawing the line in the middle, right? I'm actually just drawing this line. I'll have to expand out. Um, so I made that a little smaller because now I need to connect here. I need to go the opposite direction. And maybe I could even do that as two other little ellipses, you know, without without worrying too much, as long as I keep the same direction so that my ellipses are all going this way, right? They're not going this way all of a sudden, right? Um, yeah, so you can see now I can, oh, it was the smaller one, sorry. Um, it's okay. What what it does have though, it's it's too open, right? Meaning, because the shape here is a little complicated, it's not really a perfect circle. Um, this is a much more straighter line. So right here, you can see this curve, which would have been a circle. Um, and I can I can show that this way. You can see there's a little bit. It's more of a straight line here rather than a circle. Um, so what we need to do is actually bring that in a little bit, uh, perhaps with another shape that is, would have been a much larger ellipse. Um, okay, so now that I have my general shape, I'm going to this attachment point here meets another circle right where that that handle is attached so i need another i need another ellipse here to kind of define a little bit of that attachment right i know it tapers a little bit but for now we can assume it's it's um you know it's the same throughout and we'll, we'll fix it a little bit later so what i could do then is come bring it down and do the same thing here with a large 
and have a larger libs. Let's see, where am I? Right there. Okay. So this is at the top. This is at the bottom. At the bottom, I'm just going to make it a little shorter. Um, and now I just extrude this, you know, sideways, and I, I repeat the shape. Now, it's hard to repeat the shape without doing all the construction, but I will try. Right, I'm just paralleling that one. And the way to do it is just follow it. Get yourself in a kind of a jogging position kind of thing, so that when you're ready, okay, then you can actually start running and replicate that. And now I have to do the same, right? Right now I connected these two spots to mimic those two. Now I have to do the same on this side. And I'm orienting the paper so that my arm is, is working from left to right. Where are we? Oh, actually, sorry. I went to the wrong spot there. I should have come out here. And it still doesn't look right. Why is that? Because, uh, because this is really way out. Yeah, I see. I, this is my edge there. This one is, is not good. It's too far out. Um, well, actually, what I should have done to kind of make sure I was doing it right, now it looks much better, I could have taken a piece of tracing paper um, and do my extrusion technique that way. So I could have sort of taken my base here, and then I know I need to transfer it to those points in this direction, right? So if I move this out this way, let me mark first where the other spots were. So right there and right there. Right. And There. I mean, I'm more, I got there, but it was a little hard, right? So with, with this system, I would have it, you know, in the right away. And remember, I need to make it a little bit smaller there. So I would just kind of try to eyeball what that means. And then here, I just have to com combine it. And tracing paper is a good way to practice before you know you commit to your to your good drawing. Um, yeah, it will be a little hard now too because I already have so many lines there. But that's that's the approach, okay? Uh, and in terms of the smaller circles right right here um we just have to locate where those slices are going to be right and we said they're going to be about halfway but a little bit lower so maybe this is halfway and that part is lower than that um, so i'm just going to um create yet another another ellipse here but it's a little bit smaller, right? So how do I do that? Maybe I just create another box that comes in a little bit. And I'm just now going to consider that to be about the same circle a little bit further down. Um, so I'm just going to eyeball another cylinder there. So this, this will be, here it's going to be hidden. Um, and 
And down here, down here, I actually made a mistake in my little initial sketch because I'm saying that this bottom bulge is the same level, the same line as the top, but in fact, it's coming out a little bit. So what I should have done here is actually made it further out like that, right? So that there is a gap there. Um, yeah. So that means that somewhere here, about the this level, there is another ellipse, and yet that ellipse needs to come out. So it needs to be bigger. My enclosing square needs to be bigger. And now I don't want to exaggerate here because uh, it's only just a little bit. And then underneath it goes back to the same, but you can see it almost is going to disappear because if this is the point of that large ellipse, if I drop down, I'm back to where I was, but I will, I will draw it. I will show a little bit here. This is my large one. Yeah, I think I exaggerated. Um, I went a little bit too big. So maybe I'll just make this a little bit bigger too. Um, and then at the top, it was about the same. But now I'm, I'm just enlarging everything. What I do now is I, I sort of try to connect the other points of all my curves, all my ellipses. And I know there's these little ribs. These are called, uh, there's a name for this. They're called uh, join lines. No, crease lines. I can't remember. Parting line, maybe. No, something else. It's sort of if you have a piece of furniture that has two parts that come together. Um, I'll have to look it up. I'll, I'll have it in the recording this afternoon. <laughs> um, so let's see if we can maybe just give it a little more of a shape. Yeah, at some point, there's no way. If we want to have a little darker, we have to press a little harder, and therefore we have to kind of do it in bits, right? Um, There's no way, no way around that. Um, you can see that the drawing is a mess in a sense, right? Because it has so much stuff going on, um, but that's okay. I think, you know, if you want to do a perfect drawing, there's always the computer, but um, here I have a little bit of a mistake because the curve here should, uh, should parallel this curve. So what that means is that I need to bring this up a little bit. You see that? Now that's a little more. And my, um, excuse me, my um, my handle is still a little bit of a flat ribbon, right? So if I look at it, it's actually anything but a flat ribbon. Look how thick it is there. So, well, that's, that's just going to have to somehow... We're gonna we're gonna have to eyeball a little bit of of things here, and kind of give it a little bit of a. And at the bottom, it is more like a ribbon, right? The way it's it's connected, but there's too many details that I can't sort of handle right now. So I will just I will just give it a side. A side um, thickness right here, um, and hopefully people will will recognize that as a particular thickness. As soon as you do that, you can see though, you know, it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky to convince. Somebody say, well, is that an edge or is that round? So 
So sometimes it's best to leave things sort of, le you know, a little bit less defined. And what I'm doing right now is I'm not. So it's a uh, kind of making it harder on myself. Um, so here we just finish some of this. But as, as you notice, I'm not going all the way here to just look at, make it look a little bit more. Um, but you get a nice sense, I think, overall, that even though it may not be perfect, um, and again, <laughs> I did the same thing as before. You can see my handle is somehow just a little bit low um, and somehow a little bit too flat at the top here. Um, so the last thing I'll add to this is um, some contour lines. Um, and just like we had them in that, in these drawings by Ballin, especially in the bottles uh, that add some three dimensionality. And you, you can see it does it only on two sides, mostly not on four sides, in part because they would overlap. Um, if I start to line from this spot, um, and in part in this case, I think because maybe these are commercial bottles that have a seam on the two sides. Um, so if we had that to our mug, um, how would that be? Let's see, I'm trying my butt mug a little crooked. So I'll maybe I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, so I'll just add it to our main axis, meaning just here really and you can still emphasize some details by by working your corners a little bit um so let's say if it's here it would come down kind of paralleling your your edges, right? Um, one little trick we can do here, instead of coming down straight, because we know there is a little bit of a dip, um, we can offset that line a little bit here. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there we go. So the camera won't focus. Okay. Yeah, there's something about the flat paper. So sorry, it's a little bit soft focus, but um, anyway, the little dip there, I'll, I'll make it like that so that it, it shows that there is a, and here I have to try to catch where this line is, so. Um, and then maybe show it on the inside there. I could do a little bit on the opposite side, but maybe I'll do it less because I, again, I don't want to um, confuse. Yeah, you can see that it adds a little bit. Um, I won't put any shadowing on this. Any. Okay, so that's the second one. Uh, maybe I'll just quickly go over the other shapes in terms of just like how to construct them real quick and um, just to have them on the same video, right? So this one would be a cylinder and really it's a cone with a little bit of a curve, right? And the handle is nice and square. So actually that makes for an easier 
again, nothing is square in a, in a piece of ceramic because it's really hard to get a sharp edge because of the glaze and the processes. Um, so that's that. So if we drew that now in um, mesometric, again, we have a first cylinder. And then below that, it's like a cone. But you have to you have to establish what are the distances, right? They're actually almost the same. So right now, if I do that, that's where my that's where my other cylinder will be, but much smaller. Um, and this is a little bit underneath here, so I. Right, so it, this is one way you could diagram, you know, almost almost like a diagram, but we know this is a curve, so we have to round it. And we start to look, you know, kind of roughly. So the handle again will be here. So you start out by building the, and then you extrude it out. And then even just, just darkening a little bit, a few elements, right? You can see I'm just sort of reinforcing a few lines, usually at the edges. Um, yeah, no, I think the main thing is this, that you should try to, um, you know, what I see now is that you, it tapers, right? Uh, the You have to imagine that, like if this was a simple, Let's say it was a simple handle like that, actually like this, right? Um, and actually, Yeah, this is the part we're really interested in, right? So if this was a very straightforward. Um, so the trick is to have, um, I mean, we know, we know we have the mug here, right? Somewhere. So this is a simplified version, right? Um, so the trick is that when, I, when you establish, let's say your line on the left, right? Like you have it, okay? Let's say that's your, that's your handle. The trick is then to, well, first of all, of course, we have to find where it is in the center. And then we have to go, you know, side, sideways from that center in the same, in the same distance, right? Um, and let's say we do first the first half here and we do that, right? So then the trick on the other side is to extrude it by exactly the same thing constantly you know keeping this sort of constant length mm -hmm. and, and you'll see wait let me see where am i right here um you will see that when it bends here around right all this distance have to be right here. So I think what happened in yours is that somehow this line got, um, if you have a template, of course you can use your template, right? And ideally you would have a template that has the 30, 30, um, you know, angles. So this would be 30 and 30. Um, if, and this would be like a perfect ellipse, right? And of course, again, a perfect ellipse is a, you know, it's a constantly changing curve, but there is according to a certain certain formula, right? So, because you have two focuses, right? And then what you have is that these two radiuses are always constant. I mean, in the sum of them is constant, right? So as, as you draw it, uh, the two radiuses are always the same length. So if you had a 
if you had a pencil and you move, you know, and you had a string here like that, and these are like two pins, you could draw a perfect ellipse just by running your pencil and pulling the string in, in, in this triangle change. So that's a really complicated curve to draw, um, you know, with a compass and you cannot because it's, yeah, it's a little ellipse. Um, however, here's a trick to do if you build it with your triangle, right? With your 30, 30, um, then you can make a pseudo ellipse. Um, and that is you can draw these diagonals like that. And then you can use this center to make this, this part of the ellipse right here. Okay, and then you use this center to make this part of this. So this basically these are two big circles. I mean one big circle and one small circle, but because the two centers are um, on the same line, uh, these two these two points will be connected perfectly here because they're both tangent at that point, right? So that's it. That's one way of of drawing. Um, a sort of again a pseudo ellipse. So if you were representing a circle then again here if your handle was a, a circle you could um, you could build this you know simply by doing that same construction but having it sideways like that right. So again if your if your handle was a, a circle you know these would become by just changing this, um, you know, the orientation, then this would become your handle right here. And you could build it again with the compass, right? And you could just do it twice. Um, but because it's not, um, I'm not sure. Um, probably, probably what I would do to try to match it is I would build a larger one, right? So we want to do it like that, but yeah, but it's really kind of longer, right? So I would, I would maybe build kind of a larger, you know, with the same construction, <laughs> which now it's a little tricky here. Um, and then I would just use part of that larger and then build up. It's a little tricky. It would be a little tricky here, though, not to do to do what we just did. Uh, but the trick is that you want to, whenever you have two circles with the compass, um, right? Whenever ever two lines, and if you're building it up with the compass, these two lines, this one and this one, have to meet at a point that their radiuses. Are, are common, right? So this is the radius for the big circle, and this is the radius for the small circle. I'm sorry, from here, right? From here and from here, but they're both on the same line. That's the trick in order to have, you know, if I wanted to have like, something like that, um, See what's happening, so I have to like this is one big circle, and then the little one is it's on the same line there, right here. And then here it would have to be, yeah, this is not possible. <laughs> uh, this would have to be a, maybe a smaller one first, right. And then, um, and then maybe here for a bigger one. So whatever, whatever you do, you just have to have the two that meet have to be on the same on the same line. Like these two are on the same line here. These two are on the same line. And this big one. What is it here? Here. 
is on the same line as the smaller one. So that's the idea here. So it's it's really laborious and kind of a pain to be honest, unless unless you just have circles, right? Unless you have basic circle. Um, so for for the mug, you would start out by building your, you know, and doing this construction right here. Right, and then here and here. So these are all circles. Yeah, and then it will be like that. Um, okay. All right. Well, I think we should stop. <laughs> um, but I will, um, yeah, I, I think this is good stuff. I'll, I'll try to see if I can edit. Of course, that will take a long time because all these, all these things take forever afterwards. Shooting is the easy part. Um, let me, um,